Hi, my name is Jan Benham, founder of the Institute of Aromatherapy and Aroma Shop. Today, I'm going to talk about MCT oils and fractionated coconut oil and all the variations that you can get thereof, including some silicone replacements that you can use in your cosmetics. I am going to touch a little bit on the internal use, although these products that I'm carrying here are not meant for internal use but it gives you an idea if you want to look into that for your own use. So what are MCTs? So basically it's made up of fatty acids and a glycerol. And they have each one, each of these fatty acids have their own unique um, biochemical properties. So one of the fatty acids is called lauric acid, which is known as C12. I'm gonna refer them to this as in C numbers, and then at the end, I'm gonna put down a classification of what each of these numbers mean. So when you look at the inky names of the product you might be buying, you can see, oh yeah, that's C6, that's C8, that's C12, and so on and so forth. So fatty acids, they can have anywhere from one to 30 carbon atoms in, in them. And uh, for example, I think I already said this, but anyway, I'll say it again. Lauric acid, which is C12, makes up about 50% of coconut oil, for example. It's got a larger molecule, so it's more the fatty tissue in the coconut oil, this solid part. So there are different types of MCTs, which are medium chain triglycerides. And just because it says MCT oil doesn't mean diddly squat, basically. It means it's got a combination of any one or more of the C numbers. So I think this one is the MCT. No, I didn't bring MCT down. So MCT, generally speaking, most MCT oils have a combination of C6, C8, C10, and C12, which is the lauric acid and in different proportions. So what a chemist will do or what a production um, will do is they will take the coconut oil and then they will take out some or more or all of it of the lauric acid and they will leave variations of say fraction the C6 because they're different sizes they can fraction the different uh, acids the different fatty acids in the area. So some are larger than others and they fraction out what they want and what they desire to have happen at the end, whether it's for internal use, external use, or whether they want to produce ketones in the body, and so on and so forth. So, uh, a little trivia, if the meantime is caprylic acid, comes from the Greek word capra, which means goat. So that's a little trivia for you. So talking about the individual unique properties of these, C6 is basically an oily liquid at room temperature and boosts the production of blood ketones if taken internally. It's found in animal fats and several plants and it's slightly soluble in water but it has an odour to it. And then we have C8 which has received a lot of press recently, especially with brain octine uh, fluid that you can buy, oil for use to help improve your brain power and your ketones in your body. And it's a little bit more powerful than general, just a general mismatch of MCT oils. So uh, C8, basically when taken internally, increases the energy, boosts ketones production and helps with weight loss. It also possesses fight cancer fighting and antimicrobial properties. And then we have C10, which has many similar properties of the C8. Again, it boosts ketones, is micro, micro <laughs> microbial, and can help the body reduce fat, but generally it takes a little longer for, to, for the body to process into uh, ketones. So they say if you take MCT oil internally, then you, it takes a little bit longer than if you take just pure C8. Um, and then we have C12, which is the major component of coconut oil. And like C8 and C10, lauric acid also possesses much antimicrobial properties, but it has a much bigger molecule. So it's basically more carbon atoms connected together. So talking about the individuals now, so if we take MCT oil, MCT oil is 
usually a combination of one or the others of C6, C8, C10 and C12. I don't carry it here, but um, uh, you can see uh, the rest I do have. Now let's go to fractionated coconut oil. Now I found out when I've been checking with manufacturers that I buy from that actually my fractionated coconut oil is organic, which is nice to know because I didn't realize that. Now fr fractionated coconut oil was my first love affair with these oils. Back in the mid 90s, I started using fractionated coconut oil in my skincare products because it was odorless, it had no color, and it also lasted a long, long time. It, had, it didn't go rancid in my products. So it was a really good basis for making a basic white lotion and a basic white cream. So you see me writing it in my early book in 1995, 96, when it came out, The Creamy Craft of Cosmetic Making. I do talk about fractionated coconut oil. And there I say, I don't think it has any other value. Except now since then, we have found out that it does have a lot of value on the skin. Again, it's antimicrobial. It also contains C18. So fractionated co coconut oil contains C8, C10, and C18. Now C18 is an ester. Now for those of you who are taking my chemistry lessons, you'll know that esters, which are also found in some essential oils, are the anti-ester of chemicals. They're the common calming oils, they're the um, soothing to the skin. So they calm and soothe the skin. So you can see this is what happens actually when you apply for a fractionated coconut oil to the skin. It calms, it soothes the skin. It also helps with against any microbes that might you might not want there. So it also partially dissolves in water, which is what C8 and C10 do. And so, and it also helps with excess uh, fluid in, around the body because it has, uh, it, it does stimulate the ketones, although I think that's more internal than external. But that gives you an idea. Now the next kit I have along here is what they call Matriderm C5. And I started getting these other products for making makeup. And it is a bit, it's a bit more fluidy, it's lighter than the fractionated coconut oil and you can see that in the scale it weighs less than so it weighs less than water and the difference between this and fractionated coconut oil is that it's only got c8 in and c18 which is the esters so it's a slightly different inky name now you'll often see another thing to come back, the inky names, what's happened on the internet, a lot of people will say, oh, fractionated coconut oil and MCT oils both have the same inky name, therefore they must be the same product. But you have to look at what, um, what acids they, what fatty acids they actually have in each one to know for sure. So this one doesn't have the, C, uh, the C10 in it. So it is a little bit more like your, um, it goes into the skin much faster. It has more of a silicone, uh, by the way, uh, fractionated coconut oil has a, leaves a lovely silky feeling on the skin. All of these do. Um, but it does penetrate the skin a little bit more. And the reason why I got it in was more for helping with dispersing makeup in your makeup. Uh, because I was looking at the ideal liquid foundation and I was finding the regular oils like jojoba oil which I love has a lot of beneficial properties on the skin the when I mixed it up in with the pigments for making a liquid foundation it did go a bit cloggy on the skin and I was looking for something it had to be something very light basically silicone like for it to work so yes, it does work quite nicely and has a lot of value in your skincare products. For the properties of each of these, you can go on my light, on my website and I do talk about the different properties and also in about my carrier oils as well. Now the next one we have is not strictly, the next few we have are not strictly MCT oils. They're a combination is when we've worked with the chemist to combine the best of nature. So Naturederm IL is one such product. 
So it actually works with C12, which is lauric acid, mixed with sugar from beets, basically, and in a nutshell. So it's 90% sugar from beets mixed with C12, and it's extremely light. If you fill a kilogram, a litre bottle, it does not weigh a litre. It weighs more like 900 mil gram. So it's much lighter than fractionated coconut oil. And I found this invaluable in uh, working with uh, making pressed makeup. Um, some people have found it's great. Um, it helps remove, believe it or not, waterproof makeup. But they also find it's useful if you want your lipstick to stay a bit longer. It seems to keep your lipstick on longer. So some people add it to their lipstick formulas because it seems to make the, the lipstick more of a stay on lipstick. So it's kind of a combination here. Very interesting product. And again, I've used this in my liquid foundation and it does work very well in dispersing uh, pigments in the, in the makeup and in cosmetics. And then uh, an interesting thing I found out, and that's only by talking, you can't find this on the internet. I would have to speak to the manufacturers and the chemists to get the, and the manufacturers themselves didn't really know. I had to actually speak to the chemists to get the real answer to this. What is decaprio carbonate? Now decaprio carbonate is more of a recent addition to my line. And the reason why I got it again was liquid foundation. And I also found that if it was put into a moisturizer, it would leave a dry feeling. So it would not dry in a dry way, but in a silky dry way. So it would non, be non-oily and would absorb and help other products absorb faster. And the reason why it's mostly C8, can you believe? So it's a combination actually of C8 manufactured with an ester. So I'm just going to keep it very simple. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but it's basically C8 also manufactured with an ester, which is why it leaves this dryish feeling. So if you just put C8 on the skin, it's very good, but as soon as it's combined with this ester, it leaves that, um, that feeling of silkiness on the skin, which is awesome in a moisturizer. And I put it in my moisturizer now. It's also a great base to use in a cream or lotion for a foundation. And it has a real silicone like, the most silicone like I've ever found. And the reason why I was looking for silicone, I even can do carry dimethicone, which is silicone. This is dimethicone 1000, which is one of the heavier silicones. Because I figured if I could make the perfect foundation, liquid foundation and perfect makeup using silicone, and then I play with all the rest of my products to, to uh, basically copy it, then that's great. So I do carry it because it's interesting in, first of all, in learning about how these work and how to make the perfect foundation, you know, foundation, for example. And then when you can, when you, when you have it, then you can, you can copy it. You can see, okay, we've got this in it. What about if I do make a makeup with the Nitroderm IL? What about if I do it with Decaprio Carbonate and so on? Then you can get your uh, finished product. Now, last but not least, we have Neoderm AB. And I got this again for makeup, of course, and I used it a lot in my lip. I use it in my lip glosses. And it's basically C12 and alcohol benzoate, which is actually a naturally occurring ester of benzoic acid. Now, benzoic acid is a white crystalline acid found naturally in benzoin, makes sense, doesn't it? Cranberries and coconut oil. So it's a combination that makes, and it has a very similar effect to the IL. It has, again, it has this silicone-like quality and, um, uh, by the way, oh, and then little point, C18 is basically uh, stearic acid, and we do use stearic acid a lot in our products. I just wanted to make that clear. And stearic acid is used um, as a lubricant, and it's also very soothing to the skin. Again, an ester. So esters are very important. Anyway, I hope that is clear. I'm going to put at the end of this podcast the uh, names and the exact uh, inky names of the C numbers and what stearic acid is, for example, and then you can look it, look it up, and then you can see for yourself. And also, what 
of these are in each item, what are in each of these products. So you can make a, a, a choice. All of them are useful in their own ways. Um, uh, some people combine two or three of these in their finished products. I don't suggest you taking these internally because they have been manufactured for cosmetic use. But now you can see that why, um, like C8, I do take C8 internally and I do find it helps with, um, uh, it raises ketones. It also uh, keeps any hunger pains at bay during the day. Not that I'm trying to cut down, but it does stop me from snacking on, um, on sweets and carbohydrates. So when I take a, tea, a teaspoon or dessert spoon of C8 in the morning in my coffee, I find that I'm able to go for hours and uh, eat, eat more healthily. So I do, I do, um, I do believe in these, um, in the MCT oils, but it's why and how they work that is important to know, and how and why they work also in cosmetics. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will do my best to answer them. As I said, I got a lot of information out of chemists. It took a lot of work and a lot of cajoling to get this information because it's not, it's not all there. They don't, they want to protect their, uh, how to make the product. They don't want everyone else saying, okay, it's mostly, mostly C8, but with a little of this in it. Okay, let's see. Now I'm thinking even myself, let's see if I can make it as well. But that is what they're trying to do and I don't blame them. So, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great rest of the day wherever you may be. And it's goodbye for now.